may be seated. Now, I don't have a lot of time, so um, I am honored that you would be here, because you paid money to be here, and so, uh, and you're the reason why we're here, so why don't you give yourself a hand, all right? Now, I understand that the daytime is kind of like, you know, I don't know what it is about nightfall, where you just lay out on the floor and speak in tongues and run to the front and worship and... I don't know why you don't do that during the day, but maybe uh, you can do that tomorrow, whatever, you know, uh, just a thought, do what you want to do, um, but I want to say a great big thank you to Pastor Aaron Soto and his wife Heather and their little boy Bugs, I've named him Bugs, because last night he looked at me, I'd never met him before, he says, I got Bugs, so I was a little concerned now being on the campgrounds that he's already got Bugs. But uh, thank you, to Pastor Soto. You got great leadership here. Won't you give them a hand? All right. <laughs> to the youth committee, everybody that does work, uh, uh, Pastor Norman Pasley and Caitlin did an unbelievable job last night. So I, I appreciate them. All the technical people, I'm already making friends with them now. So uh, everything will go smoothly. And because uh, I do have some technical stuff, uh, I. Good to see my friend, Brother Steve Carson, here. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I've been married 20 years, 9 months, and 1 day. And my wife is still hot. She's so hot, she had to stay at home because it's so hot here. If you put that, it would be, it'd be uh, spontaneous combustion. So she had to stay at home. And uh, that's okay. I can say that. Hey, I call it like I see it. My wife's hot. And so uh, I'll have to bring you a picture of her and show you. Uh, but uh, I've been a student pastor for 21 years. Uh, I won't tell you my age, but I started student ministry when I was 10 years old, so you figured it out. You guys are slow. Let's just get this one thing straight. Think, and it's okay to laugh. You're not speaking in tongues right now. There's not going to be a prophetic word. Probably go out in this session. Probably. So chill. All right? Just laugh, you know. Look at your neighbor and laugh. Yeah. So, good. Thank you. Give yourself a hand for laughing. All right? Now, they've asked me to talk about technology. So, what we're going to do is we're going to, I have a theme that I'm going to be doing for the next three days. It's called media driven. Okay? Because you live in a society that's media driven. Media driven. Now, I'm going to dip up in your business the next three days, okay? I'm going to just get up all up in your business and in my business. So get over it. If you get offended, pray, pray over it. Do whatever you got to do. But I'm, I, this is fact. You know, knowledge is an incredible thing, but it's also a dangerous thing. And the problem I'm seeing with this generation is, I, number one, I'm on your side. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if I wasn't on your side. I believe in you. You're the most prophetic generation. You're the smartest generation. My generation was eat up with the dumb Dixies. Yours is smart. All right? You know all the loopholes. You know all the technology. You are so stinking smart. But the problem is you have all this knowledge, but you don't do anything with it. And then what the, the, the crazy thing about knowledge now is you got to have wisdom. It says, apply all knowledge unto wisdom. You got to use all this information that you get, and you got to use wisdom with all these tools that you have at your hands. Because if you don't, you'll mess it up. So you got to understand, and what I'm going to impart to you is knowledge. Probably not going to lay you out on the floor, probably not going to ask you to come to the front. We do enough of that. A lot of you speak in tongues, sounds like a Chinese laundromat. You lay out on the floor, you foam at the mouth, you do all that, and you walk right outside and go back to the same dumb mistakes that you always make. Knowledge and wisdom and applying knowledge. Now, I'm all for speaking in tongues and laying out on the floor, but what are you doing with it? Do you have a lifestyle change, and do you really want to know God? That's a question that requires an answer. Answer me. Do you want to know God? All right. So... I want to talk to you from the subject today on me, my space, and I. All right? Me, my space, and I. Philippians 4 and 8 says, fix your thoughts 
on what is true and honorable and right. Think about things that are pure, that are lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of place. Think about things that are pure and lovely. Now, guys, I know the loophole there. Chick walks by in a bikini. Man, that's lovely. I'm thinking about it. It's not what I'm talking about. Okay? Surfing the web, she pops up. You're like, oh, my God. He said, think on whatever things are lovely and excellent. That is excellent. That is an excellent slab of beef right there. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in the things of God. All right? Proverbs 15 and 14 says, the wise are hungry for the truth. But a fool feeds on trash. Psalms 101 and 3 says, I will set no unclean thing before my eyes. The message says it this way. I refuse to take a second look at corrupting people and degrading things. It's always that second look that gets you in trouble, ain't it? That's what got David in trouble. He saw the chick bathing down there. He goes, oh my God, I need to go back in. But he didn't go back in. He stared at it. And it got him in trouble. 101 and 5. Psalms 101 and 5. I put a gag in gossip who badmouths his neighbor. <coughs> I put a gag. You say, where does this fit in my space? We'll get there. Just bear with me. Everybody say, pay attention. Where do you hear that phrase the most? You hear, you, you hear it in school from teachers who are nagging you. Pay attention in class. You hear it from your parents. Pay attention, moron. You hear it from your pastors. Pay attention in church. Listen to me, idiot. What does pay attention mean? Basically, it means to listen to or concentrate on it very closely. To take care or heed to it. To take care of it or heed to it. To pay attention. So I want you to pay attention. Hear me out. Some, what, what, what are some things that you pay attention to every day? MySpace. Computer, internet, games, TV, school, cell phones, friends, etc. None of these things <coughs> are basically bad. But today, I'm going to invade your space. We're going to find out what's there. Romans 12 and 1 says it this way. So here's what I want you to do. Message. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life. You're sleeping, eating, going to work. And walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. Pay attention to God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants for you and quickly respond to it. Pay attention. Number one, God is constant. God doesn't change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know the scripture. He's totally himself all the time. Number two, pay attention. God can change you forever. God doesn't change, but he can change you. And as we invade your space, here's what we may find. We may find some bad habits. We may find some deception. We may find some boredom. We may even find some addictions. Who knows? But over the purpose, over the course of the next three days, my purpose is going to be invading your space, a media-driven society. Now, here we go. You as a teenager, you're being attacked by popular culture like no other generation. And you don't even understand that. Do you know that you are the first generation ever, first generation ever, to spend your whole life with point and click porn? Did you know that? Point and click. You don't have to go buy at the store. You can go online. You can point and you can click. You're the first generation that you've been raised on that. My generation didn't know that. We, we weren't raised with that. You're raised with that. Hollywood, the music industry, the advertisers, internet, and even mainstream media are using their arsenal of tools to win the battle for your heart and your mind. The problem with the arsenal the enemy is using is that it's not all bad if used correctly. This is the problem that you faced that I did. When I was growing up, it was black and white, Brother Soto. Pastor said, did, da, 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 and it was done. But today, the enemy is using things that aren't bad, that you just can't get up and preach against because... 
Everybody has the internet. Everybody has a computer. Necessity in some areas. And you're being bombarded with things, and the enemy's smart enough to know they've got to have this, so I want to penetrate the walls of their heart and their mind to get them to use it improperly. So let's look at some of these areas. First area is television. This generation views 16 to 17 hours of television each week and sees an average of 14,000 sexual scenes and references each year. 14,000. That's more than 38 references per day, every day. If you watch media, if you look at a television at any point in your life, you see at least 38 references a day of sexual scenes. Internet, this generation spends three hours a day online and is the first to grow up with point and click pornography, as I said before. Almost 90% of teenagers have viewed pornography online at one of the 1.3 million adult websites, most while doing homework. Tell you what I did. I brought a guy in that had been addicted to pornography all his life into our dorm at camp, and I had him speak to our guys, some 50 guys at our camp, high school guys. And it was amazing when he got through, he asked, he said, how many of you have either seen porn, battled it, or been addicted to it? Every guy, including you staff, raised their hand. Now, I know it ain't in Wisconsin. Because you have to pump in sunshine. You don't, you don't do all that. It's here. It's a 900-pound elephant sitting in our youth groups that we never address. But I'm going to address it. Guys, let me tell you something. Our girls have to spend so much time on the outward, and it falls on them. Isn't it so unfair that we think we can look godly, but we can watch and look at anything we want to look at? The scripture says, for you guys, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't need your approval. This is scripture. It's fact. Just do it. Here's the thing. Guys, the scripture says, lift up holy hands. Do you know how hard that is? That means before you lift your hands, every thought has got to be under subjection. There's, your mind and your heart has to be clean. You can't be lifting your hands looking at her behind. And yet... Girls, you face the pressure, and us moron guys run around like dogs in heat doing anything we want to do, watching anything we want to hear. Oh, ebobo gum, mahatsa fa fahatsa machuchu. And we're unclean. Guys, it's a problem, and you got to deal with it. We've got to deal with it. It is a, I wouldn't even ask you to raise your hands, but I'll tell you what, we need to start addressing it. You need to get honest with it. It's a, did you know that, the, that pornography, did you know that pornography brings in profit, more profit and more money than Major League Baseball, NBA, and NFL combined in one year? Over $52 billion. It's a problem. It's a problem. Did you know 30% of teenage girls said they had been sexually harassed in a chat room while 7% told their mothers and fathers about the harassment as they were worried that their parents would take away their internet use? 89% of sexual solicitations are made by either online chat rooms or instant messages. This is just facts, guys. 13 million teenagers use instant messenger. 90% of all teens in the United States have access to the internet every week. And 95% of 15 to 17-year-old 15 teenagers go online. 83% have internet access in their home. And for some dumb reasons, for some apparent reason parents aren't waking up, 29% have internet access in their room. Can I ask you an honest question? How many of you have internet? I'm just, it's not a bad thing. I mean, I'm just, how many of you have internet access in your own room? Raise your hand. Raise your hand high. Get it out of your room. Get it in a place where everybody can see. We'll talk about that later. I have a lot of young people whose parents aren't in church, and some of yours may not be. And I'm not your parent, and they're not here. So what, what we're going to have to do is I'm going to have to deal. We're going to have to talk them and deal with this each, with each other, and you're going to have to make some wise choices on your own as a teenager because you're capable if you want to please God. Music. More than 25% of teenage targeted radio segments contain sexual content. I'm going to get on music. Uh, we're going to talk about music later. It may shock you. I'm not going to throw a bunch of stuff at, at you that you may think. But tomorrow we're going to talk about a little about 
a little bit about music. 42% of the top selling CDs contain sexual content. Advertising. With more than $128 billion in your pockets, this generation has been targeted by corporate America who does everything it can to grow brands and profits without any regard to the moral decay of a generation. Scripture says to set no evil before thine eyes. Now let's get to the thing at hand. One of the huge crazes is MySpace. Huge. MySpace is a social networking website based in West Hollywood, California, offering an interactive, user-submitted network of blogs, profiles, groups, photos, MP3s, videos, and an inter internal email system. According to Alexa Internet, as of August 2006, it is the, world, the world's fourth most popular English language website and the seventh most popular in any language. It is the most popular site in the United States, accounting for 4.5% of all website visits to go to MySpace. MySpace currently reports just over 100 million members, with the 100 millionth member signing up on August 9, 2006. The website also attracts 500,000 new members each week. So understand, almost a year had its 100 millionth member. If it's attracting 2 million members every month, you do the math, how many people are on MySpace? Is it bad? Doesn't have to be. But there are some serious dangers about MySpace. How many of you, so I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it, it, is, it is a cool place to go and use in the right way. I know churches who can't afford websites, they can do a MySpace page. Cool, man, and it don't cost them anything. I know it's a good way to blog, to interact with your friends, to interact. I have a blog. It's not on MySpace, but I have a blog that I write in every week, and I'll give you that email, and you can go read a devotional I write every week uh, to our students, and anybody who wants to read it, it's pretty decent. It's all right. It's kind of stupid, but you'll, you'll get the gist. How many of you visit or have a MySpace account? Raise your hand. Everybody, raise your hand. Hi. Uh, would it be safe to say 80 to 80 percent? Okay. How many of you ever visited MySpace? Okay. How many of you that don't have a MySpace but ever you've ever been there? How many of you have Facebook? Raise your hand. Oh, okay. How many of you have? Everyone's connected. Now I'm gonna tell you what that is, guys. I'm gonna be honest. With you. That is a frustrated apostolic trying to find a mate website. I'm sorry. I mean, I see 31-year-old single people desperate typing in everything imaginable. I'm sorry. It, it, just, it just is. It is. You know, it, it, it's just frustrated people. All right, but I'll just leave that. Okay? We'll just leave that alone. Okay, five serious dangers about MySpace. So it's obviously you're connected to that, right? All right, here we go. Suddenly, MySpace is everywhere. It is discussed in the media, in newspapers, <coughs> and is the subject of many concerned conversations. This online phenomenon has enjoyed an explosive level of growth recently, and every day, countless students and younger children create their own space on the Internet. It itself, this sounds harmless enough, so what exactly are the dangers of MySpace? Number one. One of the main dangers of MySpace is the written content on MySpace. Because the MySpace pages aren't censored. And it shows the language on most of the pages is colorful to say the least. Some of the language that is put on MySpace is as graphic as a picture could ever be. And some of you provoke thoughts and innuendos that are not godly or uplifting. For a lot of youth, MySpace is a place where there are no rules. Guys, you can't say anything you want to say just because you're typing it. I've had to deal with young people that drop the S-bomb on MySpace. And I'm like, are you an idiot? I, I have pulled it up, and I saw a 13-year-old's webpage that he couldn't help it, but there was a, a vi you could visit a porn site right there on his webpage that comes up every day, uh, changes uh, advertisement every day, and it was a porn site. I don't know about you, but if I got a 13-year-old in a room by himself, <coughs> and there's a half-naked woman in a picture, he's going to be curious. 
And some of the language that is used on MySpace, some of the guys' language when they, when, when, they, when they send a message to a girl is just unbelievable. And I'm not talking about worldly, although it's there. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about us. And basically, MySpace is a place where young people think there's no rules. MySpace is not a place for you to air your dirty laundry or talk about somebody. Are you stupid or what? I can deal with ignorance. It's stupidity I have a problem with. Because ignorance doesn't know any better. Stupidity knows better and still does it. Just because you don't talk about them with your mouth does not mean it's not gossip. And I have read my spaces in youth groups and they're just running somebody. They go through a relationship and they break up and they air it out on my space. Have you lost your mind? And they're talking, oh, but I didn't say her name. Well, ding a ling fog, you've been dating her for six months. Who do you think they think you're talking about? <coughs> and you're talking about, and girls, you don't say her name, but everybody knows the little jab you're jabbing in the little conversation. Scripture says, whatever your hands do, do it to the glory of God. Do you type with your hands or your feet? That's a question. Answer me. Okay, people, let's get straight. You're going to have to wake up. All right? I know you're listening, but you're going to have to wake up. I know it's hot, but I'm hot, but you're going to have to wake up. Because I'm talking about some serious stuff here. And you're saying, I, I don't know. He's 41 years old. He don't know what he's talking about. Well, we'll get there in a minute. Don't think you're the only age group that, that has a problem with Internet. But the thing is, guys, when you talk about one another, it's wrong. And, and this is a danger of my space. You think because you don't say it, it's not, you can't imagine the discord problems we've had in youth ministry and in youth groups because of what you typed on the internet. Danger number two, images on MySpace. Many of the images posted on MySpace are sexually suggestive. And you've got to be careful surfing MySpace. All of us are flesh, especially young men, and our eyes have to be our most guarded commodity. But also to you as Christian young people, nobody, here we go. Nobody wants to see somebody's body that is somebody they know. And for the life of me, why some young people post some of the pictures that they post? Oh my, I told our young people, look, I don't want to see all of you. I don't want to see your belly button. I don't want to see your life. I, I, I told some of them, some of it I see enough at youth group, I, I see too much of it. But my God, I don't want to click on your MySpace and see you half naked. I don't want to see you hugged up, all huddled up, and all looking cutesy and all kind of. Guys, what are you posting? What are you doing? Think about it. I dealt with a 13-year-old girl who decided to take a picture, have her picture taken of herself washing her car in her bikini bathing suit. This girl's got the Holy Ghost baptized in Jesus' name. Family's been raised in the church. I'm like, and then this guy sends her a, she's got the water hose, and oh, she's so cute. She's, she's got a little bathing suit on. And a guy sent a message that says, man, you sure do know you sure do have, look like you have a lot of experience with that hose. That's my, if that was my daughter, I'm finding him and I'm going to jail. I'm killing somebody. But girls, you want to know why some of you get treated like a skank? It's because you're acting like a skank. And you're posting stuff on your MySpace that you look like a skank. Well, I can't believe he'd think I'm like that. Well, duh. Hello, McFly. I'm half naked. And it's just the allure of it all. Girls and guys, you have got to be careful. You've got to understand there's a danger here. 
Please keep photos and videos of yourself that are not pleasing to God off of your MySpace. If you wouldn't show your parents, if you wouldn't show your pastor, don't put it on there. <laughs> You're not a skank, so don't present yourself like an hourly wage worker on the street. Wow, that's a nice way to say that, wasn't it? Danger three, MySpace predators. Because of many of you post a lot of information of yourselves, MySpace is a haven for sexual predators. Anyone can do a search of their local high school and see the details of dozens of young ladies and young men. Hobbies, interests, date of birth, hair color, friends, and much more is often listed for anyone to see. If you post that, you're going to be somewhere at a particular time and date. It would be frighteningly easy for someone else to wait for you there. What amazes me is there was a special on Dateline called to catch a predator. What was unbelievable about this is it was a, actually, there was these people, they have a, they have a place set up, and, and they, get in, they go on MySpace and they get in chat rooms with these people. And they pose themselves as a 13-year-old girl with pictures and everything. And they ask these men, they get to talking to them, and they ask these men to meet them at, at, at their house because their parents are going to be gone. These men knowing they're 13 years old in their mind. Bro, let me tell you. 41-year-old man shows up at the door. Actually, the actress that's posing as a 12-year-old is, is, is 19, but she looks 12, 13. And this guy shows up, 41 years old, don't know who this lady is, girl is, don't, finds her house, shows up with no clothes on, and walks in the door with a six-pack. And then the camera people walk out and catch him. And he's like, I wasn't going to do anything. I was just here to talk. Oh. Well, there's an old song back in the 80s that goes, You don't have to take your clothes off to have a good time. Oh, no. Okay, I'll let you figure it out. What was you doing there naked, idiot? There's been pastors and preachers of, of congregations show up at these kids' homes. Let me ask you something. Be honest with me. Be honest with me. How many young ladies in this room have been sequestered or felt like there were some inappropriate comments made to you on MySpace while you were online? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. All over. Wow. Figured there'd be more. Usually it is. Some of you don't want to tell anybody. Wow. It's there. Alexandria, where I live, 45,000 people. They busted four online predators last month in Alexandria. Alexandria. Central Louisiana. Podunk. Hickville. It's real, guys. And this is a danger of MySpace. I'm just here to warn you. Danger four, unsuitable friends on MySpace. The people you meet online do not have to be criminals or predators to be unsuitable. In real life, you tend to meet people face to face, giving you the chance to decide whether or not they're the kind of people you want to spend time with. On MySpace, you can meet anyone, but you have no idea what they are about, their age or their true identity. You don't know. Be careful about people you converse with on MySpace. Even if you go to school with them and they tell you they go to school with you, they may not be a good person. Be careful. Danger five, bad behavior. Sometimes the problem isn't other people. It's you. Almost everyone puts a picture of themselves on their profile. Usually fine, yet it can pose a problem, especially when you consider the fact that most teenagers post not only their pictures, but also post their city, their state, and their country. Others post their telephone number, their school name, their full names, their friends' full names, wonderful details about themselves, and other things that shouldn't be there. For Christians, my pay, MySpace poses a huge problem for teenagers. It is not only a threat to your safety, but is a trash dump with bad ads and bad people. There is ample research to suggest that disclosing secrets or talking about strong emotions improves physical 
and psychological health. Teenagers and you guys are typically very concerned about appearance and reputation. And these blogs and online discussions allow you to sort through a lot of intimacy and conversation and communication with others that preserves who you are in ways that face-to-face conversations can't. In other words, conversations on these blogs are candid, deep, and can show the real you. And these blogs lead you to complain about your parents, share, rant, show joy, and even cuss. It's a community. A community of growing teenagers lacking in adult experience or maturity and freaks who are trying to stalk you. Guys, I love you. But putting you in a room equals disaster when you gather together in one place where no one is encouraged to be the best that they can be morally. Girl and guy relationships many times start on the internet. And when you think back to the beginning of the post, this is not, easy, this is not, some, this is not a good thing. Guys, the problem is with this generation is you don't know how to confront your emotions and talk about it because you type it. Because nobody will know who you are. You type your bad day. You share your feelings. I understand that. But never do you converse with somebody that can truly help you. And what the danger of MySpace is, it's this big forum and this big community. What would happen if you were brought to this camp, put in a dorm, and all of the adult supervision left, and you were left on your own to do whatever you wanted to do for the whole week? Chances are, although you're, all of you are fantastic, all of you are awesome, awesome, chances are you probably wouldn't be down front laid out speaking in tongues. See, you got to understand. I trust my intentions. I don't, in- I don't intend to do anything wrong. I trust your intentions. I don't think you want to get online and do something bad. But here's the problem. I don't trust your flesh. I don't trust my flesh. There are certain rules I have in my life that people ask me, do you have a problem with it? No, I don't have a problem with it, but I don't trust my flesh. That's why when I'm in a hotel room by myself, I have accountability partners uh, partners that call me. Everything cool? Everything you're looking at okay? Why? You got a problem? No, I don't want to have a problem. And the thing about it is, the danger of MySpace is there's no supervision. And you guys get on a community where there's no adult supervision whatsoever. What a dangerous thing. Guys, your flesh will fail you 99.9% of the time. Guys, I know you don't want to look at it, but you will. Girls, I know you don't want to say it, but you will. So you say, what do I do, get off my space? No, you got to be accountable. What some of you need to go home and do is say, Mom, Dad, I want to live for God. I want to be the best I can be. I want to know God. I, I want a deep relationship with God. And what you got to do, you say, here's my password. Here's my If your parents don't have it already, they need it. Go to your youth pastor. Go to, go to a youth staff person. Don't do it to one of your friends because that ain't going to work. And what you need to do is you need to be accountable. And you're saying, well, what about people that don't want to do that? You really don't want to live for God. It ain't going to matter anyway. The Bible tells us that bad company corrupts good character. The scripture says we're to flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness and faith and love. See, God knew that in your youth you were going to have some problems. So he says get away from it. These blogs can be a danger to the health of all of us. And it provides you with a hangout which always equals some type of trouble when not supervised or some type of accountability is set up. When we ignore what the Bible says, he who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm, we're going to end up with some serious problems. There has to be a reason 
why schools are blocking MySpace and reasons for parents becoming alarmed. There's got to be a reason. So is it all bad? No. Next five minutes, hear me out. But here are some things that you must do to ensure your safety and keep your Christian character intact. I wish you would worry less about your reputation and more about your character. See, you can, you can hide behind a reputation. And you know, any of you can destroy my reputation. You can go start a lie on me. People believe it. My reputation is destroyed. But you know what? Only I can destroy my character. You can't destroy my character. Because it's what I am behind the closed door. So basically what you need to work on is that I need to be character driven, not reputation driven. Because if you're reputation driven, culture is going to get a hold of you and destroy you. I don't give jack about your rep. I don't give jack about how much you jump up and down, scream and holler, speak in tongues. I want to know what you are behind the door when nobody else is looking. And that's what God's concerned about. And that's what you need to be concerned about. There's software out there. I won't get into it. Internet filtering programs are available to help protect you in the Internet. And I know some of you are going to have to go, go, go look at this and do this because your parents are not going to do it. They may not even be in the church. They may not even care. You may not even have any parents. Accountability. Guys, I'm going to tell you now. Look at me. I'm not your parent. I'm not your pastor. But I'm sure they'll agree with me. Look at me. If you have internet in your room, for the love of God and all that's sacred, please move that to an open space where people can see it 24-7 when they walk on you. You can't handle it. You can't handle it. And you're opening yourself up. You say, man, this dude is already killing us the first day. I'm really not, guys. I'm trying to give you information to save you. Periodic site checks. Go to somebody and say, hey, check my site. Here's my password. Give an adult your password. Don't have to be your parent. And say, go check me out. Be accountable. Let someone be accessible to your MySpace and check it out. And not your best friend. You got to understand temptation. It's not a matter of if you will be tempted, but when you're tempted. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There has no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you're able. But with the temptation, also offer a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Some things are definitely immoral. Adultery, fornication, drinking, profanity, pornography. Preach against them, they're wrong, black and white issue. There are some things that are definitely moral. Modesty, dressing, purity before marriage, prayer, faithfulness, reverence, obedience. Definitely moral things. But there are some things that are immoral. Neither moral nor immoral in and of themselves. The meaning given to the, this certain items is this, you make it moral or immoral. However you handle it, this immoral issue, you make it wrong or right. So you see where we're at in there as pastors and youth pastors. You see what we're up against. You see what you're up against as a teenager. So the thing is, Guys, don't post skin flicks and pictures of yourself. What an idiot. And let someone know if a threat is made or something sexual is suggested to you. And for the love of God, don't run your paho on your MySpace. Why? Because you've just made it immoral and it becomes wrong. You've been given, whether you like it or not, the gift of the web. And it's a necessity for some of us, for some of you. But the thing is, it's killing this generation. And no amount of preaching can override what you look at at least three hours a day. So if you're going to look at it, Look at 
What sure things are pure? What sure things are a good report? What sure things are holy? What sure things are healthy? Don't say anything that you wouldn't want repeated. Don't say anything negative. Don't post anything negative. And keep your clothes on. Now, I know I, I, I'm really not talking to you. I know I was only talking to Missouri Camp when I did it there because, you know, Missouri is so more high-tech than you are. My God, they marry their kin in Missouri. Jeez. The point is, it's killing us. It's killing you. And you need peace. And you need to be able to lift your hands with a clear conscience and a clean conscience. And when you come into a camp like this, wouldn't it be great just to worship God with all pure... You know why? That's why you have such moving services. Think about it. None of that's available here. So you're not having to fight it every day. Periodically fast. Go on a media fast. Go a week without it. I know before retreat, we do a retreat, we ask our kids, go on a media fast. All you can do is your homework and read the Bible. You got to make... I, I would have kids say, oh my God, just let me go fast from food. I can't take it. I had this one chick that had every, she had, she had people, all the magazines she got, she had them in a bag. As soon as that fast was over, she was going to town. It's tough. Why? Because it's part of your culture. It's part of culture. But Jesus said, come out from among ye and be ye separate. Just because culture says it's okay doesn't mean it's okay. Get a hold of yourself. Be careful. Because it is all about me, my space, and I. Bow your head. Everybody bow your head. Now God, I know that we're not running and screaming. I'm not asked for commitment. I've done what you told me to do, and I've given instruction. But God, this is one thing that this generation has got to get a hold of. It's making and distorting relationships. It's messing up young people at a young age. It's a tool you've allowed us to have. And mom and dad, youth pastor, pastor, they can't decide for us. We've got to decide. Is it moral? Or is it immoral? It's there. It's a problem. We've got to deal with it. You know what to do. The fact is, you've got to do it. What you going to do? You're going to continue down the path. Repentance mess up, repentance mess up, repentance mess up. See, that was all outside the tabernacle in the wilderness. But to go inside the holy place, you had to repent and be clean. And if you want a true relationship with God, you've got to get in his presence. And you can't get in his presence with all this junk in your life. Deal with it. I know there's some cool people here that, that you've got it all in control. But guys, God's called you to be separate. And he means it. You're his. You were bought with a price. You're not your own. Please deal with it. It's all about you, your space, and I. God bless you.